A part of Obamacare, the way they're going to cover a lot of people is through Medicaid expansion, right? That's where the government comes in and provides health care for p people who can't afford it for themselves. Obviously, a lot of the times those people aren't working, but they just can't afford health care, right? And, but a lot of the states that were run by Republican governors and Republican legislatures turned down that Medicaid expansion. They said, no, we don't need it because our poor people, we don't give a shit about them, right? So Even let, though the federal government were, was gonna pay for that. Yeah. Government, federal government's gonna pick up the tab for that Medicaid expansion. So it wouldn't have cost the states any money, but they said no. Like for instance, in Florida, Governor Scott said, no, we're not gonna expand Medicaid to give health care to poor people. And the reason why he, he didn't wanna do that because he's against Obamacare. And that's what you have to do if you're a Republican, right? John Kasich took the uh, Medicaid expansion. He's the one of the few Republican in governors in Ohio. He took the uh, Medicaid expansion, and uh, I'm on the two for one camera, guys. Right now, how are you? And uh, so, what are the so are there real consequences? Because when you hear those stories like that, what are the consequences? Well, people are going to die. Let's go to. They refused 750,000 low-income Floridians health care. Seven, almost a million people, three quarters of a million people won't have health care now because Rick Scott. No reason. Doesn't want to take free money from the government that wants to. Ha so let's do one more. That how many people are going to die from that? Let's go to 12. That means six deaths every day in Florida. Six deaths every day that they don't expand Medicare, and as many as 17,000 people are going to die directly as a result of the state refusing Medicaid. So what I like, those are numbers. Oh, come on, Jimmy. That You're just like, throwing a bunch of numbers around. Right? What does it really mean on the ground? It, you know, 17,006 a day. I can't count. I don't know what this means. You're obviously full of it. OK, so here's a, here's a Charlene Dill. I'll tell you a story about a woman named Charlene Dill from Florida. She was working three part-time jobs to help support her family, three part-time jobs to help support her family. And George Bush would call that uniquely American success story. I, I don't know if you remember that. He was on stage in Iowa with a woman who said, I work three part-time jobs. She said, isn't that great? Isn't that great, huh? Yeah. That's uniquely American. Yes, yeah, shitty, because we have shitty jobs in America. But unto his credit, George Bush also did work one part-time job. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So here is Charlene Dill. On one of her part-time jobs, she used to sell vacuum cleaners to people. And uh, she also suffered from a heart condition, which she couldn't afford the heart medicine for. Now, sometimes she would get her heart medicine, and the way she got it, would they would do a Kickstarter campaign or an Indigo to, uh, Indiegogo to help fund her to get her heart medicine. This is for real, right? So while she was doing one of her part-time jobs, uh, she, couldn't, she didn't have her medicine this time, and her heart uh, gave out, and she died on the floor of a stranger's kitchen while she was trying to sell a vacuum to support her family. So that's the right there. There's isn't that oh, someone working three jobs. So what they would have you say, what they would have you believe is that we don't want to give these poor people health care and expand Medicaid because they're takers, they're moochers. They're sitting there on their ass. If you want health care, get up off your ass. And by the way, if you're sick, go to the emergency room. You can always go to the emergency room, but apparently you can't go to the emergency room and get your heart medicine because they don't have a pharmacy at the emergency room. Okay? So you still have to go pay for it somewhere. So this woman died. Charlene, she died, collapsed on the floor, mother of three, 32 years old, working her ass off, got it stuck in her ass by Governor Rick Scott. And I say, this is going to be, uh, I, again, I'll say keep doing this stuff, Republicans, because you're going to be out of off. I mean, this does not play well. People know how screwed up the health care system is. People want to change. People voted for Obama twice when he offered them health care, overwhelmingly. So people want this. Ted Cruz put a questionnaire up on his Facebook page. Are you better off with or without Obamacare? Yes or no? 75% of the people on Ted Cruz's page said yes. So this is a loser for them. Again, I don't know. What, these guys should, the only thing worse than this is they should try to maybe uh, start the Vietnam War again, okay? Because the, this is a loser for them, just like immigration. And I say good against being, it's just like being against gay marriage, being all these, talk about going backwards and regressing. And uh, so, so anybody can jump in on no, this. I'm, I'm, I'm so angry about this story. It's hard, it's hard I, to I'm do really, it without really yelling, right? Because this is 2014. 2014. 2014. And we live in America, and we're, in America is supposed to be something, right? The we richest a, country in the world, Steve. Supposedly, right? We have a 32-year-old woman who is working three jobs, and she has a known heart condition. It's been documented. We know it. All she needs to freaking stay alive is to get this medicine. And she can't get it because she doesn't have health care. And she dies and leaves three kids behind. She dies at work. 
She, I mean, she died this, at work. She's a tanker, this, Steve. This is a is a national disgrace and a national embarrassment and, and, and an a entirely avoidable tragedy. And this is the true death panels. Okay? Yes. Now, Republicans scared that bullshit about how Obamacare death panels, they decide who gets to live and die. This is what happens without health care. Okay, we think 9-11 is so bad, and because of 9-11, we went to war, two wars, we spent trillions and thousands and thousands of people died. Every single year, 40,000 people die for lack of health care. 40,000 people die from lack of health care that they, could, that they would otherwise live. That's 40,000 people dead, that's 40,000 families destroyed, and that's another another notch of shame in our great and growing list of shameful, shameful practices in, th in this country. And I can't believe it. So I'm gonna read a quote from, uh, from Charlene Dill's best friend. She said, <clears throat> you see the main argument Republicans use is that this is some lazy person who needs Medicaid expansion, that those of us living without health care or dental care are lazy. But my friend, a single beautiful mother worked three jobs I am burying my best friend because of the policies of the Republican Party. I am burying my best friend because had Medicaid expanded, her needs would have been met. This is, this is happening to Americans in America today because of lazy, bullshit, partisan politics and, and this absurd ideolo ideology about you know, getting rid of this black president uh, signature policy. I mean, Americans are dying because of it, and it's a. It, I just, I'm so angry about it. The I don't know that, if you can tell. The, no, we couldn't. Uh, the thing that that I mean, we're all underscoring this, but the thing that gets me so incensed uh, about the argument against Obamacare is the lazy argument. It's that Americans are lazy, and that. They don't want to work, and that's why they don't deserve it. Poor, but you poor Americans. Poor Americans. Like yes, Ben this Stein is says, us. poor Americans. Poor are lazy. Americans. That's right. They're, you know, we're all outraged, of course, about this story and the stories that are like it. Uh, but one thing that really jumped out at me is that there is Medicaid in the state of Florida. It's just they did not get the expanded Expansion. Medicaid. Right. So they still do have Medicaid for low-income people in uh, the state of Florida for some people. But the question is how low-income? She worked three jobs, and you know how much money she made? I, I couldn't believe this. I couldn't she, believe it either. She makes or made $9,000 a year. $9,000 a year. Sorry, still little, didn't qualify. You and your three kids—that's a little too much money. All that nine thousand dollars you were making every single year. To, you know this the circle. What comes? What comes first, right? So now we have a person who's now homeless, and then literally at the bottom. And then of course they have to rely on government for help, right? So then that brings us all the way full circle to oh look at all these people, yeah. all these people mm -hmm. needing needing government assistance. They're lazy. The lazy but let's, yeah, but let's trace it back to where it actually started. They were healthy, law-abiding, you know, citizens homeowners. holding down, attempt, homeowners attempting to hold down a job. What also gets me, uh, I guess, flabbergasted by this story is going back to how much she was making. $9,000 a year is what some people in third world countries make. <laughs> yes. I mean, this is the United... Or the Young Turks employees. Or that. <laughs> or that, as they all laugh. <laughs> it's um, not true. <laughs> no, we don't make that much. But that's, that's remarkable. That's shameful that a woman can't grab you know grab herself by the bootstraps and and find a way up when she's clearly capable and desiring to work and it also a f failure of the press again I know every almost every story comes down to two things money and politics and a failure of the press and how you know this will be reported you know it won't be like hey this is the blood on governor Rick Scott's hands they won't be reported like that because that's what this is that's not hey someone died over a political expediency no, no they're not going to report it like that it's yeah. going to be reported as uh, because of the time of they didn't expand Medicare because they said this and then in the legislature they won't say what's yeah. really happening they're going to pretend like it's a legitimate position of Rick Scott to deny people health care for no reason so and that's what the media does 